Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my April recap. I just had to make sure in my mind that it was actually my April monthly recap. Basically, I started doing these monthly recaps this year. If you're new to my channel, hello. So basically, I go over what I bought this month um, in terms of purchases that I'm allowed to make. Basically, I have like a rule for myself that I'm only allowed to make three makeup purchases a month, although now I'm on a no buy because I'm unemployed. So I made one purchase at the beginning of this month, but I'm on a no buy until I find a new job. So there's not a ton of new new things. I have a few replacements and then I also talk about anything that I tried this month for the first time and um, anything what I loved as well, the products that I've been using and I've been loving, anything that tempted me in this month and then also what I read at the end of the month. So let's just get into it. So I made an order, the Sephora sale was in April. So I made a little order that is really not that that big at all. Um, I am V, no, I'm, yeah, I'm VIB. I'm like whatever, the second tier. I'm not rouge this year, which is good. It's a good thing. I'm happy about that. I'm not trying to be rouge um, anymore. But someone on Instagram so kindly gave me a 20% off code to use. So, I made an order with that, so I replaced Freck because I was running out of Freck, and as much as I literally hate to replace this product, I've never found anything that really, like, does what this does. Anyway, so I always try to get that on any type of sale. Um, even though 20% isn't even that much, it's basically taxes here, but anyway, I also got the Melt Millennial Pinks Palette. I've been wanting this for a long time. I feel like I'm kind of unofficially trying to collect all the melt palettes, um, and it's an expensive wish, <laughs> but this was on sale, and then I got um, this obviously on sale on top of that. It unfortunately did come a little bit broken, this like lightest pink shade here. Well, this dark blue is a little bit, I don't want it to crumble out. I think I've managed to press it back into the other. I'm just going to be gentle with it, but this shade was a little bit smashed, but I really didn't like this when it first came out, and the more I see it and the more I see people use it, I think it's a really interesting color story, and I'm more, I'm very happy to have gotten this on sale. So I will um, do a, probably a get ready with me using this palette, but that's what I bought in terms of new, like brand new, brand new things. In terms of replacements, there are two things that I have to go get, excuse me. Okay, so in terms of replacements, this month I replaced my concealer. I ran out of the Kosas concealer that I've been using. Um, in terms of base products, I often just find myself I like to just have one concealer that I use and then use up and move on to the next one rather than having a ton of different ones. Um, concealer is something that I use a lot of so I know I'm going to run through it and I don't know. So because of that I don't find the need to like hoard them and collect them. I'll, I'll just move on to the next one when I'm done. But anyway, I bought the Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. I have the shade 100 Pure Ivory. Um, I haven't used this extensively, maybe like a week and a half, but I really enjoy it. At first it was a little bit iffy because it is matte, so if you don't like matte concealer, not for you. Um, and it's a little thick, but I do find that it blends easily for a matte concealer. I like the way it wears, I like the way it looks. Um, again, if you're not into matte concealers, this is a no-go for you, but for someone who has oily skin um, and someone who likes a good amount of coverage. Like me, this also has a really good amount of coverage, so I'm impressed by this concealer for sure. I was gonna buy the Maybelline one, but like the newest one that came out, but it's $17. That's so much fucking money for a drugstore concealer. Like, are you literally joking me? Anyway, speaking of Maybelline, 
I also repurchased the Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner. I was going to get a different one. Um, I already ran through one of these, but honestly, I was like, I don't really feel like spending a ton of money on liner right now. This is a really good drugstore liner. It's not, doesn't have the most amount of product. It lasts a decent amount of time, but it's a brush tip. It's easy to apply. It's thin. Um, and it's super matte. So I would, if you're looking for a new liner that's affordable, I would really recommend this one. I am quite impressed by it. I also ran out, or we were run, running low on our cleanser that we use in the morning. So I bought the Pacifica Glow Baby Brightening Face Wash. It says it has aged Jane, vitamin C, and vanilla. I don't know. I actually just used this for the first time this morning. Um, it definitely has a scent, and it's also bright yellow, which surprised me. I don't really know what it smells like, but it's fine. I mean, it's a cleanser, and I, I've only used it once, so I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> um, and then I also was running low on moisturizer, which I just ran out of today, so I will start using this. I got the Garnier Skin Active Moisture Rescue Gel. Oh, this is Refreshing Gel Cream. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was the cheapest one I could find. <laughs> so this is what I bought. I don't know, but I feel like I've heard people talk about this before. I don't know. It's getting to summer or spring at least, warmer weather. And I was like, let's just use it. I don't know, it has a glass jar. Seems nice. I think I bought this for like $9, so I'm not mad about that. That will be my new moisturizer for the next little while. And that's it for repurchasing things. Thank God, the past couple months, I wanna say, I, I was like running out of everything all at once. Um, and then the products that I tried. So I tried the, well, a sample came in my Sephora order of the MAC Strobe Cream. I think this was a points perk. This is the shade Pink Light. I've already used it all up. I was actually surprised by how much I liked this. It's not super, like super, super shiny or like glowy um, in the sense of like an artificial like pearl. It has a pearl to it, but it's also very hydrating. I think if you like like a hydrating base with a glow, you'd really like this. This could, this is something that I could see myself buying again in winter because it's quite hydrating, maybe not for summer, but I did enjoy it. I also tried the three Beauty Bay palettes that I bought um, in March this month. So I also have first impressions of all of these, which I will link down below. Any videos that I have that are relevant, I'll link in the description box. Although I don't think there's a ton um, this month. So this is the Earthy palette, a good monochromatic green palette. I didn't have any issues with any of these palettes. I really enjoyed them. This is the Midnight palette. These are all the 16 pan ones and then the berries. So yeah, I only use each of those once, but I will have a three looks on palette video with all of those coming at some point. <laughs> um, and then Merit sent me some products. So this is a little bit interesting. They reached out to me and at first, like they, they basically proposed it as like, we will send you products in exchange for you, like creating content, like Instagram post or story mention or something. And I responded to them and I was like, if you send me these products, like am I, I was just like clarifying, I was like, am I, do you consider me obligated to post about these? And in their response, they were like, no, there's no obligation to post. Like, we just want to send you these. So I was like, okay, send them to me. And I've been trying them out. But they recently reached out to me again and basically said, like, a similar thing. And so I was like, um, I don't, like, as I told you before, um, I don't, like, accept product in exchange for content creation but if you're like if you want to send me these but like without an obligation to post like I'm more than happy to like try things out or blah 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 and then they were like unfortunately we like don't have it in our budget to like we can't change the like 
con like the yeah, my camera's so rude it's literally driving me insane anyway cut me off as i was talking about these merit products but basically merit reached out to me in the second time they reached out to me then they said no we can't we can't basically send you product if you don't agree to like post things weird i strongly strongly believe that pr absolutely should not be like a compensation for posting content at all um pr number one most of the time is like literally free advertisement for a brand it frankly doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't really give me a great read on a brand if they do that. I've had a few brands reach out to me and um, like offer PR in exchange for content creation. I want to let you guys know I don't do that. If I talk about, I mean, I've only had, I haven't had that much PR. Like I think Merit has, I mean, I'm grateful. Don't get me wrong. Like I'm so super, super grateful to have received these products. Um, and then Bold Face Makeup has also reached, like, sent me PR, which, you know, it's, like, great. Like, I, I love their products. I, I, when I ran out of these lashes that my last pair, I'll make another order from Bold Face. And it's, like, I genuinely love them. But, I don't know. If, anyway, the, Jesus Christ, co focusing on my point, my point is, if I, like, I'm never gonna, like, I'm never going to create content or mention a brand just because they've sent me PR. I don't accept those kinds of like PR for content creation type of things. I think you should pay creators to make content for you if you want them to. And I feel like also you should like, it kind of signals like a, like don't you have enough confidence in your own product? to be willing to send it out to people like and then not be scared of what they're gonna say about it like that just reads to me like you don't believe in your products like obviously people are gonna like not like everything it's kind of the way it goes when you have a brand I don't know um anyway all that is to say Merit did send me product but they did explicitly tell me that they, I wasn't required to post about them, and I have been using them, and I do have to say, like, I have been enjoying them, the products. So, anyway, let's start with these. These are the, I have two shades of the shade, uh, tinted lip oil, shade slick tinted lip oil. Um, this is the shade Bel Air, which is basically clear, and this is the shade Taupe. I really, really love these. I was going to purchase this clear one at some point when my lip oil that I have right now is running out, but these are so nice. Actually, this is a great um, just moisturizing lip oil that's definitely not a gloss. It's not super like glossy and glassy, but it's really moisturizing and it does like make your lips look sheeny and healthy um, and it doesn't make your lips feel dry after you use them. It sticks around a good amount of time. I would probably repurchase this um, clear one and I do really like the shade taupe as well. It's just like not um, super long wearing so I wouldn't like recommend this for like a super long wearing lip product you definitely have to be willing to reapply it but I feel like that kind of comes in the with the territory of a lip oil they are expensive they're $30 Canadian I believe but I kind of love a bougie lip balm lip oil product so that's that on that I also received two lipsticks so I picked these shades so these are the Signature Lip Lightweight Lipsticks. They're really trying to like promote these. I think that's why they ended up reaching out or and why they have been reaching out to so many different creators. But this is the shade Slip, which is a beautiful like light um, brown, neutral brown. I really have been loving this. These lipsticks are quite sheer. This is a ColourPop blush that stained my arm. But anyway, excuse that. And then I also have the shade 1990, which is a deeper neutral brown. Um, it looks like it's going to be quite deep when you 
turn it up in the bullet, but it's actually quite sheer, so it's not super deep at all. Um, I've been liking these as like a satin lipstick. They're nice. I wouldn't go any deeper with these shades, but I think they're really, really great. They are, again, expensive. They're about $30, which is a lot for a lipstick. But if you are someone who really likes bullet lipsticks and you like a satin lipstick, you want something that you're going to be able to throw on every day and it's going to be comfortable and not matte and all that stuff, and you're willing to spend a little bit more on it, I do really think these are nice. And the packaging is like very beautiful as well. Um, I They also sent me... so. This is the Perfecting Complexion Stick. They were out of my shade like for a foundation. So I was like, this feels like a great product that I could use for bronzer. So I picked out the shade Khaki, which at first I was like, this is gonna be horrible, but it's actually been working well for me for a bronzer shade. It is a little on the yellow side, but I have been enjoying it. And I actually do like the way my skin looks when I wear it. Maybe not the ideal shade, but I only could look online. So anyway, it's expensive though. This is like $50. Um, I would be curious about trying this as a foundation. I'm not going to lie, but again, it's like super, super expensive. But I, ha I mean, it, it has worked very well for me. I gotta say, as a cream bronzer, it blends well. It looks really nice on the skin. I like that because it is like technically a complexion product, it has a little bit of coverage. Um, so I have been enjoying that as well. I also have the Cheek Color in the shade Cheeky. This is their cream blush. And again, I've been loving this. I've been super like wanting to try cream blushes recently. This is basically like a cool toned pink. Um, that reads a little bit more berry on me, but I find this formula really, really beautiful. It's easy to blend. It doesn't patch up or lift up makeup under under it. It, it, it does stay a little bit tacky, but I set my powder on um, like any cream product, so I don't really have an issue with that. The packaging isn't like super special to me. It's just like a little dinky like kind of plastic thing but um I have been really enjoying this and I would consider getting more shades of this I'm not gonna lie and then finally I have the lengthening mascara in the shade perfect black I haven't been using this a ton um, I just ran out of the essence mascara that I was using and I've just recently moved on to using this as my everyday mascara I like it it's it is lengthening it's separating not volumizing which it doesn't claim to be but I think I personally just prefer something like I want a mascara that lengthens and volumizes like I want thicker longer lashes I don't know but if you like a mascara that's a little bit more like natural and is going to be lengthening and separating maybe you don't need a ton of volume I think it's nice it doesn't flake at all it doesn't smudge um so I don't know I like it but I probably would I mean I'm not really like a high-end mascara person um I pretty much exclusively use drugstore mascaras so I like it, but I definitely wouldn't repurchase it, and I'm sure you can find, like, better mascaras for a cheaper price point. I do love this handle, though. I love the way it feels. It's, like, nice and skinny, and I like the way it feels in my hand when I apply mascara. I don't know. Um, yeah. So those are the products that I tried. I did do a swatch video of Pretties for Your Face Shadows that I received. But I haven't tried them on my eyes yet, so I don't really feel like that's considered trying it yet. So I'll, I will keep you updated when I've tried those on my eyes. And in terms of what I loved, I've still been really on my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette kick. I have like an unofficial goal to use, like go through this palette and use every shimmer. And I've successfully done that. So... I, I'm, I'm retiring this palette from my like everyday rotation for a little bit, but I really, I feel like I've really gotten to know this palette deeply <laughs> um, in a way that I wanted to, that I felt like I wasn't as in touch with it 
as I was with some of my other palettes and I have been enjoying it a lot. I've loved to use it in companionship with, let me grab it. I've used this in companionship a lot with the Natasha Denona Gold palette. I find that these truly are a match made in heaven. I love using it with this deep brown, using the shade Sparks on my inner corner. And I've also been loving to use it with the Surge palette from Blend Bunny. Um, specifically using this shade here called Grunge. It's a beautiful, like, warm toned brown that's almost like a little kind of like a burgundy shade I don't know but I've I've been loving using it with this palette so yeah unfortunately I was getting ready a lot um in a hurry this month so I I typically up, update my daily looks on Instagram but um I didn't have as much of a chance to document those this past month I did a neutral look. I don't know if I already included this in my last month. Um, I have a highlight on my Instagram called Makeup of the Day where I post my makeup typically if I can or if I, if I have time that I'm just wearing like not for pictures or YouTube or anything. Um, I did another neutral look. I've done a lot of neutral looks with this palette. Um, neutral and a lot of like rosy looks and this is the most recent one. I did a green look that was really nice um, and oh yeah. I did a pink look using the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette which was really fun using the like bright mid, like bright neon pink um, and yeah a lot of like orangey, another like orangey plummy look. Anyway so that's that's kind of my update on what I've been loving and also I've been obsessed with this Merit Cream blush like I've been using it every chance I can get and and my Can Make Cream Cheek in 05 um, I've been using these two cream blushes any chance I can get anytime I go through the look I've been pulling these out in terms of what tempted me this month, I gotta say, I don't know, like there wasn't a ton. I've been really busy and a lot is, a lot went down in my life in April, so I wasn't quite as like engaged with things that were releasing and, and things like that. And I wasn't honestly tempted by a lot that I can really recall, but I will say I was, I just been so tempted by any cream blush that's on the market. I don't know what it is. I don't really know why, but I've just been like super into cream blush. Um, I guess I don't really need to be on the side. Why? Because I'm not really showing pictures. Anyway, I recently did a wish list video, which I will link in the description box below, which is like kind of like my updated makeup wish list. So anything that ha was tempting me anyway will be in that video. So go watch that. And then finally what I read so because I have been so busy I haven't been I didn't really meet my reading goal which was to is to read three books a month but I did read three things so you know maybe it's not as bad as I what as I think hopefully I'm gonna try to read four books in May so hopefully that goes well anyway so the first thing I read the um, spring 2022 issue came out of the magazine bitch this is my favorite magazine I have a subscription to it I would encourage everyone to read it if you can get a subscription if you can it's really really amazing the tagline of the magazine is a feminist response to pop culture it basically just has a lot of different um, articles on different pop culture things that are happening from a feminist lens. I really love it because it's super intersectional. It's super, I mean, it's intersectional. It's super progressive. It 
makes me think about things a lot of the times um, from different perspectives that I never would have thought of on my own and has really challenged me a lot to look at different things in different ways. So I love this magazine so, so much. The artwork, the cover is always stunning. Um, and I read that and I loved it. I also read the uh, book Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. This book is a nonfiction. It's basically um, the author breaking down the different like literary, or not literary, uh, language, that's the L word I'm looking for, language devices, I guess you could say, or like the language that cults use, um, kind of like breaks down what is a cult, what are modern day cults, what do, what do cults have in common in terms of like the language um, that they use. I think it's really, really fascinating. I like am obsessed with cults and I think it's like so fascinating and just like mind boggling. So I really, really enjoyed this book a ton. Um, it took me a little while to get through because I wasn't committed. <laughs> to reading this month, but I would really recommend it. My roommate um, read it, or she listened to it as an audiobook, and I think this book would be really, really great as an audiobook. Um, I really like the writing. It's fun. It's honestly an easy read, and Amanda Montel has a podcast as well. She's a co-host of the podcast Sounds Like a Cult, which I also really love. So that's why I ended up buying this, because I'm already a fan of her podcast. And then I also read the book 15 Dogs by Andre Alexis. Basically, this book is about a group of 15 dogs who were granted human awareness, like human level awareness and consciousness by the Greek gods Hermes and Apollo. So it was interesting. Um, it's short, it's like 170 pages or something definitely interesting, makes you think about humanity, and makes you think a lot about dogs. <laughs> um, it was, it didn't like super grip me. It's not my favorite book I've ever read, but I bought this secondhand and I, it was definitely interesting. Maybe if you see it secondhand, pick it up. It's an interesting book, the premise. Um, appeals to you. I mean, it did, it won the Scotiabank Giller Prize, and it was the winner of the Writer's Trust of Canada Fiction, Rogers Writer's Trust Fiction Prize. So it's an acclaimed book, obviously, but um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite, though. Anyway, that concludes this month's recap. So not a ton going on. I always find ways to speak <laughs> a lot um but yeah this month wasn't like super eventful in terms of makeup but it's kind of nice you know to like slow down on purchasing and again I am on a no buy until I get a job so there shouldn't be any new purchases for me although I did see that the nocturnal palette from Glamour Matrix the Nocturnal Palette from Glaminatrix is getting restocked and I just desperately want to buy it this month. Anyway, okay, but I'll try to remain strong, but I can't promise anything. Thank you so much for watching this rambly fucking video. I always, always deeply appreciate it. Um, if you want to stick around, I upload three, sometimes four videos every week. There's tons more of me to go around because I know that's what you all desperately want <laughs> and um, I would love to see you in my next video. Bye!